everyone, I'm Brock with PDQ. Welcome back to our Getting Started series with PDQ Connect. We are on episode five, I believe. Yes, that is correct, episode five. We're talking about automations today, and that is right. It is not just a marketing buzzword. It's actually a really cool thing, and I'm going to prove it to you here in PDQ Connect. I'm going to show you how it works, how you can take advantage of it, and why you should take advantage of it. So let's dive into the product. Okay, so we've got PDQ Connect here. This is our main screen where you're most likely, once you log in, this is what you'll be seeing. We're going to go to our automation tab here. And I'm going to highlight a few things here before we actually dive into the automation process. The first thing you should know that as you build up these automations, you might have a list of like 100 or so automations going on. You can easily search through them using the search automations options up here. You can filter for them. You can select your columns to show and whatnot. And you'll find this throughout the different uh, pages of PDQ Connect. You know, you'll notice certain uh, search fields that you can use to easily identify what you're looking for. We'll go back to our automations here. So I could type in like looking for a pilot group and there it goes, it pulls up for me. The second thing I wanna show off here before we actually dive into the automation page is that you'll see this a little enabled option here. Now this is great because once you, once you set up a, uh, an automation, it's just gonna go and kick off every time that you've scheduled that deployment for. What you can do in here is if you need to pause an automation for some reason, maybe, uh, maybe a package that you're worried about, you don't want it to deploy or any reason, you can come in here and just disable that automation and it's not gonna send off those deployments anymore. It's just gonna sit there. But as soon as you're ready to kick those deployments off again, you just re-enable that automation and they're good to go. They'll start sending off according to the schedule that you've already set. With that out of the way, now let's actually look at the different options that we have inside the automation page. So we are just going to give this automation a name, getting started. Okay, the first thing you want to look at is your packages. Now, this is going to be your packages inside of PDQ Connect. This is going to be both the uh, packages provided by PDQ that we build and we maintain, as well as the custom packages that you build and you maintain. So if we search in here, we've obviously got our big hitters like Chrome in there. If you want cumulative updates, we've got you covered. Uh, if you wanted your custom packages, let's see, I think we've got a 7-zip package. Yep, 7-zip install Josh's way. So you can add as many as these as you want. Let's see if we have Windows 11 22H2 in here, cumulative update, we sure do. Uh, and again, you can also add multiple packages. So if you wanted multiple packages to deploy it according to the same schedule, you could do that. We could add Chrome to this package or this automation. You can add to that package list as much as you want. As it, you know, they're all gonna follow the same schedule though, so keep that in mind. Well, we'll go ahead and remove Chrome for now. We'll just leave the Windows 11 cumulative updates in there. Here's the important part about automations. Again, we're kind of dealing with schedules here, triggers, how things kick off when and where you want them to. So the first trigger here is gonna be our automatic trigger. Now this one, you can probably read through it right here. It tells you exactly when this automatic trigger is going to deploy out to your devices. This one is when you first set up the deployment. So say I set up this automation and I save it, it's gonna run right away as soon as I set it up. Okay, the next time it's gonna run is when a device is manually joins a static group, a static group that you've built inside of Connect, or when a device matches the filters of a dynamic group and gets automatically added to that group. Whenever devices are added to those groups in those two ways, the automatic trigger is gonna kick off and send off the deployments to those devices. The last thing is when a package gets updated, okay? So say we update the Chrome package, as soon as we update that Chrome package, Connect is gonna see that and it's gonna de uh, deploy the software out, okay? Same thing if you update a custom package or whatever, it's gonna be like, hey, this was updated, let's go ahead and uh, send it out to whatever devices we have set, okay? The recurring tab, this is probably where you're gonna do most of your automations. The automatic tab, first of all, is, just, is really good for like pilot groups, you know, stuff that's like, hey, as soon as a new version of Chrome comes out, we want this pilot group, this test group to get the updates so they can start testing it and playing around with it. It's really good for those pilot groups. It's also good for like onboarding. It's like, hey, we have a new user here with a new computer, so throw it into the onboarding group and it just automatically deploy all that software out to them. Reoccurring is more of your standard automation settings. You know, it's like you pick the date, the time, uh, you know, how the frequency and stuff, how often you want these deployments to be automated. You can sit here, you can select here your start date. I kind of know where I'm going with this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, that it's gonna start this Friday. And let's do 4 p.m. Okay, 
So we've got our start date set. We've got our time zone already set. Uh, I'm going to repeat this every, let's just do it every one week. So this is going to re- repeat every Friday. You see that I have Friday here set. That's going to repeat every Friday from here on out as long as this is enabled. If you go and disable it, again, that's going to pause the automation so it's not going to kick off any deployment. But as long as it's enabled, it's going to kick off every Friday at 4 p.m. It's going to send whatever packages I have here set. Okay, So this is going to be good for your, your Patch Tuesday things, your making sure Chrome gets regularly updated, stuff like that. Okay, lastly is your deploy once. Now, this is really good for deploying stuff in the future. For instance, like say I was going out of town in a couple of weeks and I knew that there was going to be a new like Patch Tuesday releases, cumulative updates. I could go ahead and schedule it on here. Let's see, the next Patch Tuesday is going to be Tuesday, July 9th. So let's say I wanted those to go out on the uh, July 11th. I can set that and schedule it to kick off in the future because I'm going to be out of the office. So it's like, hey, it doesn't matter. This is going to take care of it for me. I can get uh, work done while I'm away. Anyway, so let's stick with our recurring one from now. That one kind of is our, our most common for automations. And we've already got this Windows 11 cumulative update added to it. We're going to change our date back to this Friday. And then the last thing about automations is this is where you're going to choose your devices and your groups to add to the automations. So down here at the bottom, you can add devices one at a time. So I could add Iro if I wanted. And there you can see the device down there. Or I could add an entire group. So this should have like four devices in it, but that's one of them. So, uh, And that's a static group. So it's adding those devices to the group. Again, this would be the same for the automatic trigger and the deploy once trigger. So I'm just going to... Uh, remove Iro here since he's already a member of this group. But just like that, so we've got our package, we've got our schedule, and we've got our targets. Here's where you would just save it, look for our getting started. There it is right there. It's automatically enabled. Again, if I wanted to, and I don't want this to actually run, I could disable it for now, but I'm cool with it being on. So there we go. That's how we set up our automations. And the nicest thing about automations is that you can set these up Don't tell your boss about it because you can take all the credit. Like you can have tons of automations, deploying scripts, deploying packages, and it's doing all this great stuff and you're just knocking out work orders and stuff. And as long as you don't tell your boss that it's the automations doing all the work, you get all the credit. So there you have it. I think that wraps up this video, guys. Uh, If you got any questions, make sure to hit us up in the comments down below. If you want more PDQ content, like and subscribe or join us over on Discord to hear all the latest news about PDQ. For PDQ, I'm Brock. Thanks for watching. Thank you